Greetings. It is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, CYNLIBSOC.com on the interwebs. CYNLIBSOC on Twitter. You can also find me on YouTube, of course, at whatever the fuck the channel is. And also the Facebook and the Google Plus, where things just auto post and I don't actually hang out there. I'm going to talk about three things today. Although possibly only two, because I don't remember what the third one was. First thing, I just finished watching season two of Game of Thrones. And after the most, I was doing two things at once there. After the episode was over, the warnings that are on all the DVDs came up, right? You know, warning you that this is copyrighted and if you copy it, you're gonna get ass fucked by Interpol or whatever. And what, sure, whatever. And then it came up, the copyright warning came, by the way, I've had three beers. I just finished a massive theater gig, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. Today is my fucking Friday. I just ate half of a pizza, watched two episodes of Game of Thrones, and drank three fucking beers. I'm not drunk, but I really don't give a shit, as opposed to normally where I really give a shit. Anyhow, the fucking copyright notice comes up in Chinese, and I'm thinking to myself, yes, the Chinese really give a fuck about copyright. And they're really scared that if they copy this DVD, Interpol is going to come and get them. I just want to throw this out because I want to be able to say I told you so. The Chinese are eventually going to rule the world. I did an anarchy moment a while back where I talked about how Chinese and Mormon culture are so vastly superior to upper middle class white people culture and how oh that looks like shit not you guys I'm doing some stuff in photoshop and I thought it was a pretty good anarchy moment especially because I kept talking about how much I want to have sex with cute little Mormon girls the Chinese are going to fucking rule the world one day the Chinese are statist, and you know their state is not perfect, and that yada yada yada, right? A lot of wars, so, so. but the simple fact is, the Chinese are going to rule the fucking world one day. Because while here in America we're fucking up by giving everybody Medicare and Medicaid and Social Security and Obamacare and spending all this money and trying to be an empire and shit, the Chinese are just staying at home, and biding their time and buying up other countries and they're just chilling because they they take a long-term look at things and they have all the time in the world just throwing this out number one the chinese do not give a fuck about your copyright on your fucking dvd so why in the fuck are you fairies at HBO putting the fucking copyright notice on the fucking Game of Thrones DVD in Chinese? Are you fucking retarded? Yes, you are. Number two, the Chinese will one day rule this fucking planet. Trust me on this. The next thing I want to talk about, which is not something I think that was on my agenda, but I was going to mention it. So I think I mentioned that this is a time of year when everybody's moving. And so I've got some new neighbors. The neighbors over on the one side of me have these fucking dogs that bark all the fucking... I mean, you walk by the outside of the apartment and the dogs start fucking barking. People wonder why I hate dogs. Also, apparently somebody has moved in somewhere to the complex that has cats which is good hopefully it's not the same asshole next to me who has the fucking dogs because i haven't met this asshole yet somebody's got some cats because the cats are coming over to visit me for those of you new to the podcast i love cats dogs are fucking retarded dogs are retarded 
wolves. Okay, if you take people from Arkansas and they have sex with their relatives, you get inbred people, right? Okay, dogs are wolves that were inbred by humans. Dogs, this is not like, what's the f- fucking word I'm looking for? This is not metaphorical or something. Dogs literally, truly, genetically speaking, dogs are inbred wolves. They are like retarded Arkansas hillbillies. I fucking hate dogs. Dogs are statist animals. And one of these days, I'm going to do an entire podcast explaining why dogs are statist and why cats are anarcho-capitalist. But that's another day. Man, I got some good shit on tap for you guys if I ever get around to doing it. Episode 200 of Stating the Obvious is coming up. And I'm thinking about things I want to improve and do differently. So anyhow, there's some cats and there's still nobody moved into the apartment over to my left or my right, depending on which way you're facing. So I have neighbors on one side. I don't have new neighbors on the other side yet. Still hoping for cute girls, preferably cute girls with cats. That would be ideal. The second thing I want to talk about, and maybe the last thing, because I still don't remember what number three is. This occurred to me today. This is why I mentioned that Facebook and Google Plus, I pretty much auto post. I never sign in there. I don't reply to anything there. I don't comment there. Everything that shows up there is just an auto post from either the Cynical Libertarian website or from YouTube. Some douchebag, and this was hilarious. This faggot was posting on the Google Plus site with some smart ass comments like, oh, I didn't realize you were the spokesman for all women. It's nice to meet you and oh, you're self-righteous and you're threatening people or something. It does. I don't even care. If you care, go read the fucking comments. But what was interesting was I checked his Google Plus profile. Of course, he works for the government and he was posting this during for his time zone, what would have been work hours. So I just want you to know that if you pay taxes, you are paying this person to be at work posting idiotic commentary on my Google Plus page, which is good because it helps increase the SEO value of my Google Plus page because I'm certainly not doing anything to increase the SEO value. And after he posted his obnoxious comments, I got another follower on Google+. Plus. So, it all, again, those of you out there who fucking hate me, please go to Google+, Plus, go to Facebook, find Cynical Libertarian Society on those things, and post your hate comments because it, it helps my SEO. And it helps the Cynical Libertarian Society be found and it'll get me more followers. So go over there and post your little rants about how you're so fucking awesome and how I'm such a fucking racist, sexist, homophobic fag and whatever else the fuck you want to do. Oh, yes! That's the other thing I was going to talk about. The medicated generation. All right, let me wrap this. Let me finish this. Wait, did I finish that? Yeah, so the idiot posted. It was during work hours. Oh, Yes, there's a point. There's, believe it or not, there's a point to this. Here's the point. I thought about this today because I was thinking, should I respond to this person? You know, what are my criteria for responding to people when they leave comments on any of my avenues of internet presence? Because I talked a couple of casts ago about how I have some regular listeners over on YouTube and when they leave a comment, I read it and I think about it and I respond because my regular listeners are important to me, all three of them. And it occurred to me today that there is a criteria that I have for if I'm going to respond to somebody who disagrees with me. And I feel good about this criteria. I really do. If you disagree with me, and this is what I do now. This isn't a hypothetical in the future. Like This is what I did today or yesterday, whenever it was, when this little faggot was posting on my Google Plus page. Faggot, by the way, let us remember. You know, I'm thinking about starting a hashtag and a dedicated web page called Take Back Faggot. So that we can try to get back to understanding that faggot doesn't mean a homosexual. 
faggot means an overly dramatic and effeminate male. You, you don't have to be homosexual to be overly dramatic and effeminate. For example, this guy from looking at his Google Plus profile, I could tell that he's overly dramatic and he's effeminate. He's a faggot. Now, he may not take it up the poop chute. I don't know. Maybe he does. I don't care. It doesn't matter. But you can be a faggot without being homosexual. So I'm, I'm thinking about starting to push that because I'm really tired of people getting upset when I use the word faggot the way it's supposed to be fucking used. Anyway, so this faggot comes over and puts his shit on Google+. And I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, should I respond to this? And it occurred to me, here's my criteria for responding to people who choose to disagree with me on the interwebs. And while I'm doing this, let me explain something else. Because some of you out there are stupid. The difference between... Well, you know what? It doesn't even fucking matter. I don't care. Forget it. We, I can talk about this some other time when I give a shit. I have a lot of stuff to do right now, too. That's why I'm banging out an our anarchy moment because I can't fucking talk. All right. If you're going to disagree with me on the internet, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to follow... I'm going to backtrace you. Some of you will get that reference. You've been backtraced. I'm going to backtrace you on the internet and I'm going to see what are your credentials to disagree with me. For those of you who might be listening to this for the first time ever in your life, let me tell you, and for everybody else out there, for all you fucking femistatist and you fagostatist, fagstatist, faggot statist, I might be about to invent a new yeah, I might be about to invent a new word if I can learn to talk. Fag status status fag? Fagastathia? Fagastathia? So all of you femistatist, you statheist, you left wing faggot statist, you right wing faggot statist. Chris Christie, he's a right wing faggot. He's effeminate and overly dramatic. I would call Hillary Clinton a faggot. She's overly dramatic, but there's nothing effeminate about her. Anyway, look, I'm digressing. Imagine that. When you leave commentary on anything that I post on the internet disagreeing with me, I'm going to go and I'm going to look you up based on whatever, whoever you comment, whatever. Here's what it is. If you don't have some body of literature, some body of work that indicates you've done some thinking in your life, I am going to completely fucking ignore you. Let me again point out that I have taken somewhere in the range of 15 philosophy classes at a college level. I have read multiple philosophy books. I have led philosophy discussion groups and I have done this fucking podcast where I have discussed philosophy for 10 fucking years in November. I listen to Stefan Molyneux on a regular basis. I listen to Michael W. Dean. I listen to Ben Stone. I listen to Aaron Clary. I do research. If you leave some fucking commentary on my Google Plus page and the fact that you're hanging out on Google Plus to begin with tells us you're a goddamn faggot because my God, there is nobody on Google Plus worth talking to. The fact that you're even there tells me you're a fucking faggot. You leave some commentary on my shit and you don't have 10 years worth of philosophical research, you don't have 10 years worth of philosophical writing or podcasting or discussion. You're just some fucking jackass who signed up for Google Plus because nobody would be friends with you on Facebook because you're such a fucking loser that the only job you can get is working for the government 
and while you're at work, you're on the fucking internet commenting on Google+, Plus, you get nothing from me. You get nothing. You get nothing. Because it occurred to me today as I was in the shower, and you go, yeah, that's arrogant. You're self-righteous. Yeah, I am. And you know why I am? I'm about to tell you why. Because I have 10 fucking years of my life put into philosophy. 10 fucking years. 10 fucking years of thinking, of analyzing, of taking classes, of reading books, of listening to podcasts, of watching videos, of doing this podcast. I have 10 years of mental effort put into this. And when you come at me espousing some fucking philosophy that you got from reading a fucking bumper sticker that you got from listening to a fucking Obama speech that you got from reading the Bible when you come at me with your fucking statist philosophy in which you have invested no thought, no logic, no reasoning that you just believe because everybody else around you believes it and you're so fucking terrified to be different and you're so fucking terrified that if everybody didn't suck Obama's cock, who would build the roads? When you come at me with your fucking uninformed, stupid little opinion, trolling for attention on Google+, Plus. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get attention. I understand that you have mommy issues, but I'm not here to solve your fucking mommy issues for you. Number three, as I was walking down the street the other day, a truckload of college-age boys went driving by me and they hung out the window and looked at me and screamed, Fuck you, faggot! And I thought to myself, there they are. The smartest generation ever. The future of America. 12 years of public school, 18 or more years of parenting by a woman, college students, future of America, driving down the road in their pickup, hanging out the window, screaming, fuck you, faggot. Yes. Yes, our future is bright. And by bright, I mean it won't be long until we, the United States of America, the citizens of the United States of America, the legal fiction known as the United States of America, is dominated, owned, and controlled by China. China. 